at Celebration 5, confirmed celebrity guests come and VIP passes go, news and rumors for video gamers, and an old familiar face is going to be coming to the Clone Wars. It's March 30th, and you'll hear about those stories and more this week in Star Wars. This Week in Star Wars is your one-stop source for new and noteworthy developments from the galaxy far, far away. I'm your host, Matt Fox. And now, this week's lead stories. StarWarsCelebration.com announced this week that Carrie Fisher, star of Under the Rainbow and Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back, will be appearing at the Star Wars convention late this summer in Orlando. The actress who portrayed the youngest senator in the history of the Galactic Republic is now an old hand at Celebrations, having appeared safely behind a curtain at Celebration 2, and more accessibly at Celebration 4. No word yet on what other celebrities will appear at Celebration 5. However, StarWarsCelebration.com conveniently informs us that Fisher, as well as Ray Park, Darth Maul, Daniel Logan, Young Boba Fett, Amy Allen, Ayla Sakura, Orly Shoshone, Shaq T, and Peter Mayhew, Chewbacca, will all be appearing at the C2E2 convention in Chicago, which takes place at the McCormick Place Convention Center on April 16th through the 18th. Reed Exhibitions, which conveniently runs both Celebration 5 and the C2E2 convention, is promoting a mini Celebration 5 at the C2E2 show, in addition to the aforementioned celebrities, special commemorative Celebration 5 C2E2 t-shirts and memorabilia will be available at the show. Details are available at the StarWarsCelebration.com website. One thing that is not available at the StarWarsCelebration.com website are the VIP Jedi Knight and Jedi Master ticket packages mentioned on last week's episode of This Week in Star Wars. Those packages went on sale early today and were quickly sold out in just over half an hour. A couple pieces of collecting news this week. JediNews.co.uk reports that the Hasbro exclusive mail-away figure that will be available this fall following the rocket-firing Boba Fett figure will be the Clone Wars Sergeant Brick. A cursory internet search reveals no information about who Sergeant Brick is, although I presume he wears white armor, and no doubt champions the emerging economies of Brazil, Russia, India, and China. International man of mystery though he might be, Sergeant Brick will be available to join your collection this fall, no doubt for the paltry sum of five UPCs, and a shipping and handling charge roughly equivalent to the price of a new figure at retail. Also noticed this week by yakface.com, interestingly enough, was a detail on the rebelscum.com faction figure checklist for the 2010 Vintage Collection. Rebelscum's checklist indicates that there will be chase figure repaints called Antique Force Detail Collection. No further information is provided, apart from a list of the 12 figures that will be available in the collection, So, we can only hope that the powers that be at Rebel Scum deign to tell us in the coming weeks exactly what they know about the Antique Force Detail Collection and what it may entail, and how much a pain in the butt they're going to be to get. StarWars.com has teamed with Acme Archives to create a series of 12 prints by 12 different Star Wars artists depicting scenes from The Empire Strikes Back. The first of those... The taking of Echo Base by the Sith Lord Darth Vader by Tom Hodges went on sale last Friday and sold out quicker than those VIP packs. This can hardly be considered surprising, though, considering that these prints are limited to only 100 copies, whereas there were three times as many VIP passes available. The following 11 editions in the print series will be available on a monthly basis through next February. A little bit of publishing news this week. Amazon.com has posted details about the upcoming Star Wars Visions book, which was announced some time ago, without details about what it might contain. We now know that it is going to be a collection of 100 pieces of art from the, quote, most well-known and promising working artists across several disciplines, genres, and countries to draw upon the entire Star Wars galaxy for inspiration. 
In short, a giant book form of the Star Wars Galaxy trading cards from Topps. Scheduled for an October release, Visions is currently available for pre-order on Amazon.com. But wait, as always these days with Star Wars, there is a shocking but not at all surprising kicker. In addition to the traditional hardcover retail version with a suggested price of $40, there is going to be a limited edition with a retail price of $400. This book is devastating. This version will contain 50 additional prints not available in the standard edition, as well as a series of five archival prints which will be signed by the artists. It also comes with a real cloth cover and a clamshell case. As mentioned, both versions of the book are available for pre-order currently on Amazon at prices substantially less than those suggested retail prices. If you're interested, I encourage you to use the retailer link on the front page of ThisWeekInStarWars.com. Also, This Week in Comic Stores is Legacy Issue number 46. In video games news this week, fast on the heels of the Star Wars Lightsaber Duels app for the iPhone and iPod Touch, THQ are soon to release a Star Wars Cantina iPhone game, in the vein of Diner Dash and Animal Crossing. Inexplicably, screenshots of the game show that the bartender is not were from the actual Star Wars Cantina, but instead Dax from Star Wars Episode Two. And the woman who serves drinks that, I guess maybe is who you play in the game, isn't B. Arthur. Details are available on Gizmodo. But there must have been a Death Star canteen, yeah? There must have been a a cafeteria downstairs, in between battles, where Darth Vader could just chill and go down. I will have the penne a la Arabiata. (laughs) And in the last bit of news this week... USA Today has reported that Boba Fett will be appearing on the Clone Wars this season. Consistent with this season's theme of Rise of the Bounty Hunters, the young Mandalorian is slated to appear late in the season, and will be voiced by Daniel Logan, the actor who portrayed him in Episode 2, and is rumored to be slated to play him in the upcoming live-action television series. No word on which particular episode Fett will appear in, or what role he will play in that show. However, a still from the episode does appear on the USA Today page. Hey, Boba Fett! There's a new film out there that was premiered at the South by Southwest Festival in Austin a couple weeks ago, and it's called The People vs. George Lucas. Now, I haven't seen the film, but I have seen the trailer, and I've read reviews of the finished film, and I read stories about the film while it was in production. And with a name like The People vs. George Lucas, you can probably pretty quickly determine the point of view that the producers are bringing to the project. Now, I saw the film as a child when I was six years old, and my fandom in the 70s and early 80s was second to no one. That said, I've never understood the fanatical, intolerant viewpoint of many fans who seem to believe that the point of absolutely everything Lucas has done since the special editions in 1997, and up through the prequels in 2005 and on into the Clone Wars currently, is diabolically calculated to erase our childhood memories of those films. Thing is, I've always got those memories, and I always will. And more importantly, I've got the films on DVD, which means along with the special editions, I've got two versions of Star Wars. And one day soon, I'm sure I'll have a third version of Star Wars. And really, how can that be a bad thing? One final technical housekeeping note this week. You'll notice that our website was revamped in the last couple days, and when we did that, our RSS feed was also changed. So, it's possible that if you're subscribing through iTunes, there may have been some hiccups or duplicate episodes or episodes missed in the downloads recently. I apologize for that and any confusion it may have called. The conversion is now complete and it should be smooth sailing from here on out. And that was This Week in Star Wars. Join us again next week for more news, notes, and developments from the galaxy far, far away. Visit www.thisweekinstarwars.com or, for our lazier listeners, 
www.twisw.com, where you can find links and more details about the stories mentioned here. This Week in Star Wars, we troll the web so you don't have to. This Week in Star Wars is not affiliated with Lucasfilm, its subsidiaries, or any other entity mentioned in this podcast. Star Wars, its characters, and creations are the property of Lucasfilm. All of the trademarks are property of their respected trademark owners. This Week in Star Wars is intended for informational and entertainment purposes only. This podcast is copyright 2010, This Week in Star Wars. Invaluable technical assistance provided by WebStorm Interactive. News, comments, and questions can be directed to host at thisweekinstarwars.com. More information, links to stories presented, past episodes, and additional contact information are available at www.thisweekinstarwars.com. For I am Vader, Darth Vader, Lord Vader. I can kill you with a single thought. Well, you'll still need a tray. No, I will not need a tray. I do not need a tray to kill you. I can kill you without a tray, with the power of the force, which is strong within me, even though I could kill you with a tray if I so wished. For I would hack at your neck with the thin bit until the blood flowed across the canteen floor. No, the food is hot. You'll need a tray to put the food on. Oh, I see the food is hot. I'm sorry. I, I did not realize. <laughs> oh, tray for the... F- yes. I thought you were challenging me to the fight to the death. Fight to the death? I, this is a canteen. I work here. Yes, but I am Vader. I am Lord Vader. Everyone challenges me to a fight to the death. Lord Vader, Darth Vader, I'm Darth Vader. Lord, v- Sir Lord Vader, Sir Lord Darth Vader. Lord Darth, Sir Lord, Lord Vader of Cheem. Sir Lord Baron von Vaderham. The Death Star, I've run the Death Star. What's the Death Star? This is the Death Star. You're in the Death Star. I run this star. This is a star. This is a f- star. I run it. I'm your boss. You're Mr. Stevens. No, I'm... Who is Mr. Stevens? He's head of catering. I'm not head of catering. I am Vader. I can kill catering with a thought. What? I can kill you all. I can kill me with a thought. Just... Fu- I'll get a tray. <laughs> this one's wet. And this one's wet. And this one's wet. This one is wet, 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 this one is wet. Did you dry these in a rainforest? Why? With the power of the Death Star, do we not have a tray that is dry? I do not... No, 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 I was here first. You have to form a queue if you want food. Uh, can I have a... Oh, Penny Arabiata, that'd be very nice. No, 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 do you know who I am? That's Jeff Vader, that is. I am not Jeff Vader, I'm Darth Vader. What, Jeff Vader runs the Death Star? No, Jeff... No, I run the Death Star. You Jeff Vader? No, I'm Darth Vader. Well, you're his brother. Can you get his autograph? I can't get it. No, I'm Jeff... All right, I'm Jeff Vader. I'm Jeff Vader. Can I have your autograph? No, f*** off. Or I'll kill you with a tray. Give me penny a la arabiata or you shall die. And you and everyone in this canteen. Death by tray it shall be. (laughs) 